Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm going to do a little quick uh, two-part series on making some flint knapping tools. Um, let me preface this by saying I am not an expert flint knapper. I am not even a beginning flint knapper. Okay? Um, I basically just was very intrigued and very interested in Indian artifacts. Um, I, I love seeing the tools that they made out of stone. And, um, you know, one day, hopefully, I'll be able to make some. But before you can do that, you need some tools. Now, obviously, they used just rocks to beat on the rocks. They used things called hammer stones, and they used pieces of antler and bone to make the, the knives and the axes and uh, the tools that they needed. But, you know, fast forward to nowadays, so we use things like copper, you know, metal, uh, to help us make those types of things. So I have a friend of mine who lives in Texas and hopefully she could find me a nice piece of uh, Texas chert and uh, send it to me so we could do some uh, playing around with that. But in the interim, I'm gonna show you how to make a couple tools, okay? The first one is called a pressure flaker. And after it's made, I'll show you how to use it. But basically you're gonna need yourself a little dowel this one here is five and seven eighths, so you know, around six inches. You're gonna need yourself a little piece of copper wire. Now, if you don't have access to a piece of copper wire, you could use a nail, but preferably copper because it's softer and it ends up getting like a texture on the end that kind of grips on the, the flint. This dowel is what do we got? Three quarters. Okay. So now you're going to want to find the center of this. You can just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be exact. All right. So you get your center. You're going to want to get a drill with a drill bit that's slightly smaller than this. So that there's a... Um, a pressure fit when you push it in. Now, if you're not comfortable holding something like this and drilling it, by all means put this in a vise. But um, I have no problem doing this, so we're just gonna put a little hole in here. Go slow to start. All right, that's just about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is get yourself a wood file like this. It has a rasp side on it and a smooth side on it. And you're going to want to bevel this end. Now, if you have access to a uh, belt sander or a disc sander, by all means, use that. So you get the idea. You're going to want to make this dome shaped, okay? Then you want to take the other end, just cut the sharp edges off so it's comfortable in your hand. This doesn't have to be a dome, just, just so it's comfortable in your hand, okay? So I'm going to get that done and then I'll be back. Okay, so we have our dome shape on the one side and the other side we just cut that edge off so you could you can hold it in your hand. Next, you're going to get your piece of copper, place it into the hole, just get yourself a piece of wood or something, tap that in until you have about a quarter of an inch left out, get yourself a little metal file. Start rounding that off. Hopefully you can see that. It's got a nice little dome shape to it. And here's how it's used. Now if you made the hole a little too big and this is loose, you could epoxy that in. But basically, um, you take a piece of chert like this. And they, they kind of grind the end a little bit with a stone to make what they call a shelf. 
and you take the pressure flaker and you're going to put it on one of those little shelves and press down. As you can see that, it knocked off a little tiny chip or flake and some dust. And what you're doing actually is you're sharpening it. Now you can do this over your, you know, your thigh, get a little bit more pressure on it. And again, I'm, I'm not an expert on it, but if you look on this side, you can see where the little pieces came off. And what actually happens is you get a sharper edge. And the reason why I learned this was to make a sharper edge when I'm using my, uh, my flint and steel. So I mean, you can press it down like this on something. When you start getting good at it, you start to you can remove some pretty big pieces. As you can see here, see that chip came out. Now, right there where that chip came out, it's extremely sharp. That's just sharpened that whole edge. So now if you went to go strike that, you'd get a good spark because that's nice and sharp. Well, there you go. That's how I do stuff. Stay tuned for the next one, um, and uh, we'll make a bopper. So thanks, everyone. Appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed these videos, give them a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you soon.